Hey nerd family and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at HBO Max one year later and we want to see if it's still a good option. Alright guys before we get into today's video I'm gonna go ahead and roll that intro and I'll see you back here in a second. Alright guys, welcome back. As always, I hope everyone out there is staying safe and staying healthy. If you haven't already checked out the nerdcircle.com, head over there and check it out. Make sure you're following on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real Nerd Circle. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe for more. Alright guys, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Now if you guys haven't seen the full review I did last year on HBO Max, make sure to go ahead and check it out. I'm going to try my best to not repeat too much of the info from there, but there will be a little bit of a repeat in here if you have seen that previous video. We're going to cover a little bit here, but we're going to try to just get into the topic of if it's still a good option now that it's been out for one year. Of course, HBO itself has been out for a very long time. They started back in 1972, and they are still the longest-running pay subscription service. They are owned by Warner Media, which is also owned by AT&T. So they are a pretty big company. Just to name a few, they own a few brands such as Warner Brothers, DC Comics, and we will touch base on that a little bit more later, Cartoon Network, CNN, TBS, TMZ, and TNT, True TV, and they also own Cinemax. Now that's just to name a few, and I don't want to go too deep into the whole Cinemax thing. There's still not a whole lot of info that's out there, but with them still owning Cinemax, and not putting Cinemax onto HBO, that is what they've currently decided is to not put any of the Cinemax content on HBO, which is fine. But they've also stopped making uh, original content for Cinemax, and they've pulled their apps and everything. So I don't know if they're working on going away from Cinemax, or what the end goal is there. There's not too much info. But there is still some great content on Cinemax. And I do think they should have some kind of upcharge if they're not planning on putting the Cinemax content on there for, for free. Have some kind of upcharge where you can go in and watch the Cinemax content if you choose. Just like all the other things. You know, if you want to click on DC or, you know, TNT, whatever it is. If you want to click and see those, there should be an option where you can, you know, pay a little extra and include the Cinemax content so that way you can get to it easily. Maybe that's just me. But I do think they should do that. So HBO Max, if you're listening, let's go ahead and work on that. Now, I think we can all agree that out of all the pay services, HBO definitely has the largest library. Like I said, they have been around the longest. Now, you can argue if they have the best library. I mean, that really comes down to personal preference. You may like certain originals or, or you know content that's across the different pay services more than you do HBO but I think HBO has the widest range of content. Now, as it stands, if my information is correct, HBO Max currently has 2,115 movies and 673 series. So they may not have the biggest of libraries. I believe, if my sources are correct, uh, at least as of a year ago, so I know it's still a while ago, but it's the last number I could come across, uh, Netflix had something like 3,700 and something movies, so they definitely have more, but I will tell you, I used to love Netflix, I still subscribe to Netflix, but I think over the past year, maybe two years, especially as all these other streaming services have, has come out, and Netflix has been pulling content, yeah, they've been adding content, but to be honest with you, some of the content they've been adding, I feel has fallen a little short, and both my wife and I have noticed that some of the things that come across look like good shows or movies and you go into them and they're dubbed. It doesn't tell you anything previously about them being dubbed. You can kind of figure it out if you read some of the actors names and things like that. You find out that they're foreign. You can kind of figure it out. But some of them are dubbed really well and you can you can sit through it. Some of them are dubbed horribly and you can't sit through it. But we're finding a lot more of these dubbed things on Netflix and I think that Netflix should be telling you there should be something on there that tells you if it's dubbed or not dubbed or whatever so you don't get all excited to watch something. 
moral of my story there is that I think a lot of the content they're putting up there now is not the best of content. Now, of course, Netflix still has some good originals that I'm going to tune in for, and they still have some good content, but because a lot of it's being pulled, because all these other providers are, are now putting their content on their own services, I think Netflix is sort of grasping at straws. I think we're going to make a whole separate video on that of, of where Netflix is going to go in the next year to five years, whatever it might be, but I, I, I feel like they're kind of going downhill. And if you want to find out if HBO Max is right for you, you really got to compare it with some of the top end services. And HBO Max is coming in at $15 a month or $14.99 right now. And Netflix comes in around the same price point, depending on what plan you choose. It is all the way up to, I think, $17.99 at the high end. So you kind of got to put them both on the same pedestal and figure out what's the best option for you. If you're only going to choose one of the higher priced options. And honestly, like I said, I still have Netflix, but I'm really leaning towards HBO Max being the better platform going forward. They're only continuing to add more and more content as time goes on. And we know that HBO, when it first started as HBO Max, had a whole lot of uh, a back library of HBO content, which is usually great content. Again, personal preference, you may not like any of the HBO content, but I think they, they started with a lot. And that's it's just only going more from here now to kind of touch base on on dc since they do own dc we did lose the dc universe sort of they put most of if not all of the content from the dc universe over onto hbo max if you go to the dc universe website it does actually have like a little tab you can click to see all of the uh, content you can find on hbo max it does have some cool features where you can click on the movies and TV shows that are uh, put out by DC and kind of see, you know, where you can watch them. If some of them are on Netflix, some of them are on the CW, whatever it might be, you can you can find them across those different platforms. It kind of helps you out that way. You can still subscribe to uh, DC. I think it's DC Infinite, something like that, where you can get the comics and uh, you, you still have some of the other features like the store and uh, some of the community boards and stuff like that if you so choose, but they did pull all of the TV shows and movies and put them over on HBO Max, so that has happened. Now, in comparison, if we're gonna compare apples to apples here, we know obviously HBO Max, which used to be HBO, you can also compare some of the other pay channels. Cinemax, which we know that HBO owns, who knows where that's really going, like I said, but we got Cinemax, we have Showtime, and we have stars now stars was always kind of on the lower end they were never always too expensive so i i don't really want to loop them in as one of the higher tiered pay services but they are one of the paid services so they are there to kind of go off a, a little bit here showtime is actually owned by viacom cbs which is the same company behind paramount plus and all their all their networks there so to not go too deep into that what I think, especially because you guys know how I feel if you watched my Paramount Plus video, that I think they still fall a little short. I think they have a lot of great things and, and, and stuff they can do to become a good streaming platform. And yeah, I know they're priced a little cheaper than what we're talking today, but I think they fall a little short. I think they have some work to do. But just like with Cinemax, how I say it should be an upcharge for HBO Max, I really think that Paramount Plus should put an upcharge for Showtime. I do subscribe to Cinemax and Showtime as well as Stars. I have most of the subscription uh, services that are out there so I can test it for you guys and, and kind of see how things go. And I really do think to make things easier, now that Paramount Plus has come out, they really should work Showtime in there and Cinemax should work into HBO Max. Again, maybe that's just me, but I think that it would be a great idea for them both going forward to have those options to have a little upcharge versus you paying for two separate things and having to log into two, two separate uh, entities. Just have it bundled into one. Everyone would be happier. Now, I will leave some links down below as to uh, some of my sources here. I will tell you guys that a, a newer uh, article uh, that has come out over at Android Authority that I will link down below has a great way for you to kind of go see all the different things that are currently on HBO Max and they break it down kind of by category or by uh, network so you can kind of see all the different things there so it's, it's pretty cool if you guys want to go check it out make sure to follow the link down below now I don't have any hard numbers as to you know how much content is on Cinemax versus HBO Max or uh, Showtime versus HBO Max or Stars. 
I, I did go through and kind of see, but there's no hard numbers, so I don't want to give you guys any numbers and, and be wrong about it. But I think looking through, HBO Max definitely has the most content, and it's continuing to grow, especially now that they have HBO Max. I think they're going to continue to add more and, and have more originals. Now, like I said, the other services still have their originals, and maybe you like some of those shows that are on, on those networks, and unfortunately to see them, you have to subscribe to those. But when you boil it down, I think HBO Max definitely has the most. I just don't have any hard numbers. But if you guys want to see another awesome uh, source here, check out realgood.com. I'll go ahead and link it down below again, but it's going to be R-E-E-L-G-O-O-D.com. They also have an app for both Apple and Android, but they have a lot of great things. You can you can go ahead and input all the different uh, platforms that you subscribe to, and you can see all the different shows, movies that are on those platforms. You can break it down by just movies, just TV shows, or you can do both movies and TV shows. And you can sit there and look through all the different things that they offer. You can see if it's uh, offered on multiple platforms. So it's a really great website to check out if you want to see what's out there and what's on a streaming service before you decide to sign up for it. I did look through uh, some of those just to kind of get some ideas here, but like I said, it didn't give me a definitive count as to what was on each each service, and I didn't want to go through and count every individual item uh, to, to sit here all day and do this, but looking through, it does seem as though that there's a lot more content on HBO Max in comparison to all of them. Hey guys, editing Dave here. I'm interrupting your regularly scheduled programming to just let you know as I'm editing this video. There's been some new developments that I wanted to make to get into this video now by the time you guys see this video it's probably going to be old news but i shot this video a couple days ago and as i'm sitting here editing yesterday and today there's been some news that have come out i did want to make sure to get it into here so it'll probably be a little over a week old by the time you guys see it but it'll still be relevant there may be some other things or decisions that have been made after the fact that i don't have in this video but we'll go ahead and touch base on those uh, when we hear more of it here so what i wanted to uh, show you here let me go ahead and switch to the other screen here all right and i will have all this information uh linked down below if you guys would like to uh to get all this information here you can also google it and, and get more information we're, uh, we're going ahead and using the verge as a source for us here today but it looks like hbo max is going to be launching an ad supported tier for 9.99 a month coming in june so pretty shortly after you guys see this video there will be a ad support version coming out it's going to save you five dollars a month some of you might be into that some of you may not care to save the money to, to have ads the moral of the story here feel free to read the full article but it looks like what they're saying is that you're going to save five dollars a month but you are going to lose a few things of course you're going to have ads but you're also not going to get those movies that come out the same time as they come into theaters so if you do keep the $14.99 a month version, you'll still get those movies the same day they go into theaters. With the ad supported, you will lose those movies as well as, of course, have ads. So it really comes down to it's going to be worth it for you to save $5 a month. But that is what they are talking about now. Now, there may be some other things that come out uh, as we uh, approach into June here, but this is what we're seeing for today. So I did want you guys to know about that, that there will be an ad supported version coming soon. So if you would like to save a few bucks a month, you will have that option. Me personally, I think I'll keep it on the $14.99 a month. To me, $5 to have the ads and to lose the movies is really not worth it for me. Now, the other thing we want to touch base on here is it's also come to our attention that AT&T and Discovery are striking a deal. Now, it says in this article they're taking on Disney Plus. And I believe they're also kind of going head to head with Netflix. Of course, some of the bigger services that they want to compete with. So pull up this article, read all about it. But what it breaks down to is they want to team up and have all the Discovery content that's now on Discovery Plus, as well as all the HBO content from HBO Max and all the other services that are on HBO Max to eventually become one. This is still in its early stages here of everyone trying to figure everything out, but it looks like it might go through. Now, there's no saying what that's going to do for us. Hopefully, the prices will stay the same. Just have one streaming service that has everything all together. 
maybe there'll be some kind of bundle deal. Who knows what's going to happen as time progresses here. I'm also curious to see how they're going to do it with the ad supported version. As of right now, Discovery Plus doesn't have ads and they come in at a really great price point. So I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen with this as time continues. Now we may get more information in the days to come. As soon as I do get more information, I'll make sure to uh, post it across some of the social media channels. So if you're not following along, make sure to follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real Nerd Circle. But this could be a good thing if you just want to have one streaming service, not have to have multiple streaming services. So if you want to even say pay the same price that you would currently pay for both of them, but just have one of them that you go into for all the content, that could be a great option. It could also work out where they cut a little bit of a deal. Instead of you paying the, the separate services, maybe they have a deal where you can lock in and get it for a better price to have both of them. But I still think we're a ways away from this happening, but time will tell. Definitely keep an eye out there, see what's going on. We'll make sure to update as we get more information, but I wanted to make sure you guys have this info in this video. If you guys want to get more information, head over to TheVerge.com, take a look for these articles. You can also find the links down in the description below. But I do think it's definitely intriguing to see these two, what I consider amazing streaming services, to come together. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and send you back to your regular scheduled programming. I hope you guys are enjoying. Now let's go ahead and jump into uh, another quick demo of the application to see if, uh, if we notice any changes, or just to kind of show you guys, if you haven't seen it before, how it functions. We're going to go ahead and pull it up on Roku over here. Uh, of course, it does work across most of your streaming devices, uh, but today we're going to be using it on the Roku TV. Now, if you guys want to see a more full, in-depth review of HBO Max, make sure to check out the video that I posted for the full review. If you guys would like an updated full review with any changes or uh, anything else, let me know, and I can definitely make a new video for that. Today, we're going to take a quick look here just to see what it's all about. So I haven't really noticed any changes per se, but if you guys want to see some of the things that were just added, you can see here, of course, there's definitely no shortage of things that they've added recently. You can check out some of the popular movies. Of course, they got the Mortal Kombat, Zack Snyder's Justice League, New Mutants. I mean, they have... It's HBO. I mean, they have a lot of stuff. I mean, what can you say? I think they have revamped the look and feel of the app just a little bit. Things look a little cleaner. Of course, you can go in and you can choose your hubs. You can go to just HBO and see your HBO related content. So you guys can see there's some of the uh, the new shows that have uh, come out recently, The Nevers, Mayor of East Town. So you definitely got a lot of new content. There are some things coming soon. Now we'll go over and you can uh, take a look at the HBO Max originals. And I think that's what's key about most of these services uh, that you're, if you're trying to compare, is what they have for originals. You know, some of them may actually share some of the same uh, movies and, and things like that. That, that are on the service, although some of them try to, uh, you know, to get it just in particular for them only, but some of the movies are across different platforms, but your originals are only going to be on that service. So definitely originals is something you're going to look into to see if that's the service for you. And I will say that HBO Max originals have not been short as of lately. They've definitely been putting a lot out. I haven't been able to see all of them yet, but there are definitely some good ones. Uh, the Flight Attendant, I think, is definitely a, a good show. Make sure to check it out. I 
I've heard a lot of other good things about some of these. I just haven't watched all of them yet. But there's definitely a lot of good Max Originals here. I do want to see Raised by Wolves. If you haven't seen Doom Patrol, it's, it's definitely worth checking out if you're a, a DC fan. Of course, again, for those of you that don't know, you have your DC, your Turner Classic Movies, your Adult Swim Collection, your Studio Ghibli, which I know there's not a whole lot on there. If you guys want me to make any comparison videos going forward, I'm pretty sure I said this last year as well, but just no one reached out to me about it. If you want me to compare like what's on here for Studio Ghibli or you know Cartoon Network, Looney Tunes, Crunchyroll, anything like that, to another service that offers it or just the actual like premium crunchy roll or anything like that. I know that there are some uh, uh, services you can pay for whether it be for Apple TV Plus or Amazon Prime video channels where you can do like Cartoon Network and I think crunchy roll and, and some other things. So if you want me to compare to those channels and kind of see you know what's on one what's on the other so you have a better idea let me know more people that want that I'll definitely make videos on that and get those out for you guys. Well, let's just take a quick look at DC since we were talking about uh, all the DC stuff coming over here. I know they had some of the DC stuff when it first launched a year ago. They just didn't have everything. We did a little comparison in that uh, first video. So if you want to see that comparison, go ahead and take a look at that. But we'll take a quick look here. We're not going to go through all of them, but we did go A to Z here. So you guys can get a quick glimpse as I scroll down as to what's here. I'm sure they don't have everything and I already know that there are some DC things that are missing only because some of the contracts are still with either Netflix or some of the shows go uh, to WB or you know whatever it might be not everything is on here but I do hope over time they can curate it and get it over here um, I know that the WB ones might be a little challenging because they share that with CBS so I, I hope that there's a way that they can maybe get it on here and get it on like Paramount Plus if they can just put it on both of them since they own you know stake in both of it it'd be great to be able to find it on both platforms But I know that uh, CBS hasn't done everything, or Paramount Plus hasn't done everything as far as putting CW stuff up there either. So I know that, like I said, they're falling a little short still. But all in all, the app is very easy to use. Definitely no shortage of content. They give you lots of different ways to find stuff. So whether you want to break it down A to Z, or you want to look for the new content or coming soon, or you know buy some genres, they give you lots of ways to do it, but they don't make it too complicated. Um, I mean, you can you can break it down by movies or by series. You can just search up top. You can browse. So if you want to go to Last Chance, you can see what's leaving soon. Surprise Mortal Kombat's leaving soon. It just got here, but it may have been one of the, the ones they put on here temporarily since it's still in theaters. But you can come through and see what's leaving soon if you want to make sure to catch it before it leaves. You can see what's currently trending, or like I said, you can you can go and browse by genres. You can see what's coming soon. You can even just go by originals, and I think it shows you all the HBO and the HBO Max originals. So if you want to get an idea of what's coming soon and kind of put it on your calendar to make sure to watch it, 
I mean, it definitely gives you a lot of great options. All right, guys, so to sum it up, I think HBO Max is a great platform. I think it's definitely going to just keep improving and they're going to keep adding stuff to it. Hopefully we will eventually see them add Cinemax, but again, we don't know what they're doing with, with the whole Cinemax uh, brand there and, and, and what their plans are. Hopefully we'll kind of find something out with that soon, but is it the right option for you? And I think it comes down to a couple different things. How much you're willing to spend. Um, if you want to only spend $15, $20, let's say, maybe you can do a couple of the cheaper services and, and get more for your money versus one service if you're only willing to spend that, that certain amount. You might be able to go with the free version of Peacock, which I guess you could still do either way if you, if you do this or not. But, you know, you might choose to do the free version of Peacock and maybe you do, you know, Discovery Plus for $6 a month and maybe you do the the ad version of, uh, of Paramount Plus, and maybe you just stack a couple of those and get yourself more for your money, and maybe you end up you know, having some, some more things there. Maybe that's the way you do it. If you're just trying to decide this over any other premium, like higher price service, you know, Showtime, and Showtime's coming in at, I think, $11 a month, give or take. You can get some deals that are out there, but you know, maybe you're just trying to compare what you want to do uh, and that aspect of it and my personal preference is go with HBO Max if you're only going to choose one. Now if there's certain particular shows that you need well then you're going to have to hop on some of these websites that I told you here and check to see what shows are on those services. If they're you know Netflix originals obviously you're only going to find those on Netflix so I think what you need to do at that point is to look at the originals see how many you're interested in look at what's on each service to see what you're going to like better and then just go with go with you know whatever you think's going to have more that you're interested in but i think as time goes on i definitely think that hbo max is something that you're going to want in your uh, in your arsenal of uh, of different uh, streaming services there i believe they still have some trials going on out there but they also have a lot of great deals if you uh have at&t uh, for your cell service, you can get some deals. If you have AT&T for your, your home internet, like I do, I actually get it for free based on my internet plan. So if you can score it for free, definitely give it a shot. So I believe I pay about $70 a month for internet, and it includes the $15 HBO Max. So that's not a bad deal. I also have T-Mobile phone service that throws in Netflix. So I really don't have to pay for the two top end services and I, and I pay for some of the, uh, the lower end ones and I find some deals here and there to, to help make sure I'm not you know, spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Whether you get it for free or not, I think HBO Max is a great option. Definitely look for those deals. Definitely check out the links down below so you can see what's on all the different services before you make your choice. But if you haven't tried out HBO Max yet, definitely give it a shot. I definitely think it's going to be something you're going to enjoy. And because all these services are month to month, if you try it out and it's just not for you, there's no harm in canceling it and trying a different one. Some people actually do that where they try out a couple different services. You know, maybe you try out HBO Max for three months, six months, whatever it is, and you find you're just not using it anymore. Cancel it. Sign up for Netflix. Do it for three months, six months. Maybe some, some originals are coming out around that time frame. And then you find out you watched them all, there's nothing else to watch, cancel it and try another one. I mean, there's no harm in doing that. It does get a bit tedious of trying to, you know, go through that, but there's no harm in doing that since the, all the services are month to month, unless, of course, you lock in for a certain price. Other than that, if you guys would like to see any comparison videos or take any uh, deeper dives into any of the companies or streaming services that we talked about today, let me know down below. I'll definitely get some stuff put together if everyone wants to see any uh, any more deeper dives or any comparisons of any of the, uh, the, the offerings that HBO Max has here with some of the other things that are out there. If you guys haven't already, make sure to check out thenerdcircle.com. Don't forget to follow across Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real Nerd Circle. But that's going to go ahead and end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you got something out of this uh, HBO Max being one year old. Let me know down below what you guys are currently streaming and what your favorite streaming platform of choice is. If there's anything I forgot to mention, I'll make sure to leave it in the description down below. If you guys haven't already, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so you get notified of any new videos to come out. You can follow the links on the screen to the older videos. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave it in the comment section down below. 
And until next time, guys, stay nerdy.